Welcome to the Grants Online webinar for new federal program offices. Uh, we, we are also using these webinars for a uh, refresher for uh, federal program officers that have been in the system for a while. This particular session is going to be covering award action requests. That is the way that our recipients are able to submit a request into the agency that um, doesn't have another placeholder in Grants Online. If, there's, if it's not a progress report, it's not a financial report, um, it doesn't really have another place to um, uh, stay to stay in Grants Online. Uh, we use those. We use the section of Grants Online called Award Action Request to allow them to submit um, requests to the federal agency to use their grant money in. Uh, a way that may have not been spelled out exactly on the award document. Also, there may be uh, a need for uh, perhaps an extension to the award or something along those lines. So we're going to show how does the recipient submit that kind of request into the agency using grants online. Okay, so I'm going to log in as a recipient user. And all users get the notice to users. All users come to the advisory page when they first log in. Now, because the system does not know at any point in time when a recipient needs to submit an award action request, there are no tasks in the inbox for this particular uh, action. The recipient will initiate an award action request from the awards tab of Grants Online. Let's go ahead and pull up the process map for award action requests. And this is the, not that one. Let's go ahead and move to the top of this set of process maps. Here we go. AAR1. Here's the process map for an award action request. and just shows the steps that are involved in this particular flow. From the awards tab, we're going to have to search for whichever award we'd like to use to submit a request on. So I'm on the awards tab, I'm now going to click on the search awards link. And now I have a way to search for various awards in the system. Most recipients don't have that many awards for any one particular um, bureau or even uh, combined bureaus in Grants Online. So any recipient can just click on the search button and all of the awards that they have will come up. You can always narrow down your awards by any of these data fields that you see at the top. But just clicking on search will bring all of the awards up that are that have been sent to the recipient. Notice there's still one in this particular account that says pending acceptance and that is because this particular one, um, no one has gone through the steps that we went through in a previous webinar to accept that award. So that has a status of pending acceptance. All the rest of these that we've used in training in one way or another have been accepted uh, by the recipient organization. Another thing I want to point out here is that notice some of them have a principal investigator indicated in this far right column. Some of them do not. And that is because that recipient administrator task to manage the users has not been completed. And so there has not been a, recipient, a principal investigator assigned to that particular award. It does not stop the grantees from taking action on the award, from submitting an award action request. However, it will stop one particular action, and that is the progress report for research recipients. That will be covered in another webinar. 
This particular webinar is on award action requests. So we're going to select one of these awards here so that we can submit an award action request. Let's select this one right here. We're just selecting one sort of at random. This award has been accepted, so we see that status here right at the top. As we scroll down on the grants file, and think of the grants file as a as a folder that holds all of the documentation that's pertaining to this particular grant award. We have this gray box that has an overview of information for this grant award. And then down here you have an area of sub-documents where you will see something called an award package and that's basically a way to quickly get to that award document that you that the recipient uh, authorized representative saw when they were accepting the award. Award file zero basically is the holder of all of the documentation that was involved in processing the new award. If any amendments are made to this award, they would have subsequent award files with subsequent numbers in this area. As we see, there's already been one award action request that has been submitted on this particular award, and we want to submit another one, so that's what we're getting ready to do at this point. Further down, you will see the financial reports section and the progress reports section. So, <clears throat> let us go ahead and submit a re an award action request. In order to do that, we start from the grants file drop down and select Create Award Action Request and Submit. This brings us to an index page. And this is an index of various options that the recipients have for submitting an award action request. These options are detailed in this guidance document down here right above the return to main button. It gives them great detail. Let me go ahead and click on this guidance document right here. And it provides a lot of uh, some background. It provides several different links to other guidance documents. And then as we scroll down, we have an index just like that is the same items that are on the actual page of Grants Online. So depending upon which option the recipient would like to, to submit, they can come over here and click on uh, this particular guidance document to find all of the detailed information that will guide them through that particular award action request. Let's look over here and let's select a satisfy specific conditions. <clears throat> now, I didn't check to see if there are any specific conditions on this award, so we're going to find out if there are. Click on this one and it brings us to another page with a drop down list. And we do have multiple specific conditions on this award that we can use for this action. Now, if we need guidance, let's flip over here, and we can click on Satisfy Specific Conditions, and it takes you to a section in the guidance document where it gives you all of the information that is needed in order to perform this action. We're going to go over here. We're going to click Select SAC Name, SAC meaning Specific Award Conditions, and let's say that we are now going to let the system know and let the agency know that we have obtained this permit that we needed to obtain uh, that was in our specific conditions. <coughs> Excuse me, please. Thank you. Um, once we select the specific one that we want to uh, address, we can now go down here and put a justification 
or just a little bit of language as to what our response is. So um, please be attached uh, permit. Um, Attachments link does not appear until the document is successfully saved. So even though I say please see attached, I must first click the save button. Only after I flip, click the save button can I add my attachment. So I will choose my file, go to my trusted dusty file here, and this is my permit. Save attachment. And now I have the attachment here. Notice this one specifically had a due date. Not all have a due date. But this one does have a due date. And based on this due date, I am well within the range of this due date. I'm going to click Save and Start Workflow. OK. Now remember, when you click Save and Start Workflow in Grant Online, it does not immediately go to the next person. A task is created in the inbox of the person who selected that option. And here is my task. So now I have the option to forward it to the agency. Now I am logged in as the recipient authorized representative. However, if I was logged in as the principal investigator or some other user, then I would not have a forward to agency option. I would have a forward to authorized representative because only the authorized representative can, afford, can forward these um, action requests, award action requests to the agency. But because I am logged in as the authorized representative, I immediately have the option to forward to the agency and submit. <coughs> so now that workflow has moved into the agency. We can look at that in the process map. It was initiated, rep, authorized representative reviewed it, and sent it to the agency. So now it is sitting with the assigned program officer within uh, the agency that it was sent to. Let's go look at the actual grants file. And notice I'm using my breadcrumbs to navigate back to the grants file. Let's scroll down to the grants file. Now I see a second award action request that has been submitted to the agency and I can see where they stand. This particular award action request that was submitted earlier is now in the Grants Management Division. This particular one is with my program officer. And again, looking at the process map, most award action requests will come in from the recipient to the program officer then the program officer will complete their review and send it on to the grant specialist. Who will complete their review, send it off to the grant officer for signature. There is a possibility for an optional review if needed. The grant officer is the one that will sign off on that award action request. If the award action request has a asterisk beside it in the Index. Let me go back to the index. Here's a copy of it in the guidance document. See these with an asterisk beside it? These particular ones will be turned into an amendment as they are being processed with the within the agency. And it will be returned back to the recipient as an amendment for them to countersign. If there is no asterisks besides the name of that particular award action request, then it's basically processed as simply a letter and it's signed off by the grant officer and then the recipient is simply notified that it's been approved. <coughs> so those don't have to be countersigned by the recipient. 
Okay, so that is the recipient part of the award action request. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to log off. I'm going to log back in as the federal program officer. What I didn't notice for that particular award is who the federal program officer was on the award because I just kind of selected it at random. I do. Let's see what is in the inbox right now. And here is an award action request. So good. We were able to select the right person. This person was the assigned program officer for the award that we just worked on. So let's click on view. It has now come into the inbox of this assigned program officer, and let's view the award action request details. At this point, the document is locked to me on the federal side as a federal program officer. I cannot make changes to any of the data that was entered by the recipient. So if I think that uh, some adjustments need to be made to that data, I will have to select the option to return to the authorized representative so that they can make some adjustments. When that's done, it's best to put some kind of comment here in the blue box so that you can explain why you are returning the award action request. Once the award action request is uh, acceptable to the program officer, they can then forward it to the grant specialist for review because the program officer is not the one to sign off on a what action request. That must be done in the grants management office. So you would just forward it to the grant specialist and you would just let them know that you are recommending for approval. All required. Documentation is attached. Okay? And submit. And that's the end of the responsibility of the federal program office. At that point, it moves into the grants management office, and the grants managers can now complete their review and approval. Okay, so this ends the award action request webinar. We're going to um, log off from right now and we hope that this has been informative to you.